You're watching Telecom TV's exclusive video coverage of the first ever OPNFE Summit held here in San Francisco. And I'm joined now by Chris Wright. And Chris is Vice President and Chief Technologist, Office of Technology at Red Hat. Chris, thanks for talking with us on Telecom TV. You there. In the context of open solutions for NFV, when we say open, what do you actually mean by open? Well, it's a combination of things. Um, first and foremost, I think we're really talking about open source. So we're trying to build a platform out of open source software. Um, but open source is, is only one component. The other piece is really about open standards and interoperability. And the, the two go hand in hand. So using an open source uh, development model, you can build a platform that gives you interfaces that you can sort of de facto standardize on. Uh, creating a set of open standards, but it's, I think it's those two key things. What, what are the critical components that an, an, an NFE offering needs to possess if it's going to be open? Well, it starts with the, the base platform layer, and from, those, from that perspective, the components are um, essentially starting from, from a hardware platform. Software on top of that would be things like the Linux operating system, a hypervisor, typically KVM, uh, or higher level orchestration like uh, for, for the virtualization layer like OpenStack, virtual switching layer embedded in the hypervisor like OpenVSwitch. So a bunch of open source projects combined together to build this, this baseline platform that will run network applications on top of. Are we confident that the telecoms operators will adopt open NFE and we won't end up with variants and, 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 and types of NFE that really just aren't interoperable? It's, it's definitely something that, that we at Red Hat are, are deeply conscious of. Um, so I think the focus that we're trying to bring to this project is how do we do all of our work upstream as open source development rather than uh, use some baseline open source project, tweak it, make it essentially a commercial proprietary fork of an open source project and fragment the market. Because ultimately, operators are looking for interoperability. And interoperability means uh, things need to work together. Standardization can happen quickly if you're using uh, similar or the same code bases. So uh, absolutely, we believe that it's possible. But it's not without um, really onboarding people to this idea that upstream is the place to do the development and downstream is the place to deliver your products. And can we just sort of backtrack on what that means? So when you say upstream and downstream, what are we referring to? Well, if you, if you look at an open source project, there's a, there's a community developing the, the source code associated with this project. That community we consider upstream. It's the source of, mm -hmm. of, the, of the code base. Downstream is maybe a, a consumption uh, place where productization can happen. Uh, you know, users are consuming this, this upstream source. The difference between those two may be negligible, or it could be considerable if you're doing uh, local hardening and, and bug fixing that's specific to, to your use case. But we're not talking about innovation in that downstream platform. We're talking about innovation upstream and stabilization and, and productization in the downstream. As we move out of, of trials and proofs of concept, is it possible to build a, a commercial open NFE solution using open source components? It's absolutely possible. Um, there's, there's still challenges. I mean, the software projects that we're working with are, are growing and maturing. Uh, there's features that we need to add to those projects to satisfy network operators' requirements, especially around the, the areas of serviceability and reliability. They're used to an environment that's uh, built from, from a hardware high availability model. And we're really helping them move to a more cloud-like software service level availability model. Uh, so, the components are there. We've seen uh, in, in our labs we can show that it works. What we need to do is work together with the operators partially to help them understand the functionality and partially to help them have the skills to operate this, this new kind of platform. Are we able to virtualize all the necessary network functions or are there going to be some that, that just aren't suitable? Great question. I, I can't say I know the answer um, because we're still learning as we go. Um, what we're doing is focusing intensely on performance. Mm -hmm. And most of the concerns around can I virtualize or not are in the, in the realm of performance. So as we improve the packet processing rates inside a, uh, an application that's running in a virtual machine, um, that, will, that will let us know how, how successful we are. It's conceivable that we'll want to retain some level of, of hardware acceleration. 
but the difference between accelerating some small functions, say SSL termination for, for uh, crypto, is quite different from offloading an entire um, function into hardware, to a function-specific hardware. And a final question for you. Um, this is the first OPNFE summit. There's a lot of people here, surprised us how many people are, are, are here and participating. Why, why is that? Why do so many of us believe that open NFE is the route to go? Well, I think that the industry is facing some, some real tough decisions ahead. And we have sort of the, you know, the, 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 the intersection of flattening revenue and uh, rapidly growing data rates across the network. So the operational expense of, of running a network is increasing. Revenues aren't. It's not a great business proposition. Um, using open source software so that we can leverage a, a large body of, of common non-differentiated infrastructure to build innovative new solutions on top is really why everybody's here. We see a way to collaborate, we see a way to reduce our expenses to, to build these new networks, and ideally, I believe, we're able to actually build something new, exciting, interesting that will, that will take us to the next level in this network transformation. Great, Chris, thank you very much indeed. Great, thank you.